The Blue Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is entitled Rounding Up the Payroll Bandits. The police department of York City, facing a general shakeup because of pressure from prosperous and influential businessmen who have suffered financial loss from a series of payroll robberies, has taken a vow not to rest until the last payroll bandit is behind bars. As our story opens, patrolman Dan Garrett, who secretly operates as the Blue Beetle, is discussing the matter with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz, the chemist. Police commissioner has offered a week's leave of absence and a promotion to the man who rounds up these payroll bandits. Well, where are you going to spend your leave of absence, Danny? <laughs> I wish the commissioner had as much faith in my ability as you have, Doc. Oh, I think he has, Danny. You certainly emulate the Northwest Mounties. You always get your man. Yes, but as the Blue Beetle, not as patrolman Dan Garrett. Too bad you couldn't run down a few criminals as Dan Garrett and get a promotion. I'm not interested in promotion, Doc. I prefer to work secretly as the Blue Beetle. I know. Well, that's your life ambition. You're old enough to know your own mind. What's the morning paper say about the Wesson payroll robbery? Oh, uh, just a moment. It, it's right here on the front page. Ah. Yes, here it is. Wesson Company payroll robbery... Believed by police to be inside job. Police Commissioner Donnelly issued statement to the Perez as follows. After thorough investigation of several recent payroll robberies, we are convinced that in each case the job was engineered from inside. I agree with the Commissioner that it's an inside job. But I also believe there's a mastermind planning each robbery in advance. The fact that each robbery has been so perfectly planned and executed? Mm hmm Oh, uh, someone out in front in the store. I, I'll see who it is. Excuse me. Good morning, Dr. Brown. Oh, good morning. Good morning, good morning Mr. Jarvis. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, yes, lovely, lovely. The trees are so green and the flowers in the park so bright and colorful. Well, I haven't been out in the park so far this spring. You should go, Doctor. It would do you good to get out in the sun. This apothecary shop is rather dark, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is, rather but I spend a lot of time in my laboratory. Ah, yes. You're a very capable chemist, I've heard. Have developed some rather interesting and effective formulas. Well, I, I'm constantly experimenting. Yes, and so am I. You work with chemicals. I work with men. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Jarvis, uh, how is the mission you founded working out? Splendidly. The Reverend Morehouse is doing a remarkable job of rehabilitating the derelicts who wander in. I understand you get jobs for them. Help them to get on their feet if they show any aptitude at all. Yes, yes, I have helped some of them. That's what we're here for, to help one another. Well, I just dropped in for a bag of gumdrops. Uh, always like to have some gumdrops in my pocket. Uh, the children, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Youngsters are fond of them, aren't they, uh, uh, how many? Oh, uh, about ten cents worth, I'd say. A few at a time. They stay fresher that way. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. Here you are. Oh, thank you. And here's your money. I'm sorry. I've taken up so much of your time. Uh, goodbye, Doctor. Uh, good day, Mr. Jarvis. That was Jarvis, the philanthropist, wasn't it? Yes, yes, that's right. Funny old codger. Yes, but he's doing a wonderful job with the unfortunate he attracts to his east side mission. He even goes out to the penitentiary and meets criminals when they are released. He finds jobs for them. Hmm. Must have money and influence. Mm -hmm. He apparently has. Well, got to get going. Mike Manigan's probably waiting for me at headquarters. Uh, what are you going to do about these robberies, Danny? I'm going to ask the commissioner for a special assignment to run down these payroll bandits. So long, Doc. Uh, goodbye, Danny. And good luck. Good luck. 
to order. Now, oh, Benny, take a look outside and make sure nobody's listening to that door. All clear here, Slick. Okay. Now, listen closely, all of you, so I won't have to repeat the instruction. The armored truck bringing the payroll of the Apex department store is due at 12 noon sharp. Benny there will be one of the guards in it. You'd better beat it now, Benny. You go on duty at 9. Okay, boss. And remember, when you shoot, Shoot into the side of the building. I don't want any of our boys hurt. Sure thing, boss. Anything delays you, call me. I'll be checking Apex employees out to lunch right next to the loading ramp. All right, boss. Oh, Luigi. Shoes, boss. You'll have your flower wagon at the curb near the Apex loading ramp. That's all right, boss. And be sure your Tommy gun is well hidden under the flower pot. Yes, boss. You know what to do when the time comes. Shoes, boss. Dead the man to make of the poor witnesses. Right. Joe, yeah. you and Eddie will have the car with the motor running. Across the street, headed toward the river. Right. Okay. Oh, Chink, you and Blackie will be on the loading platform. As soon as the bags are dropped there, pick them up and make a dash for the car. Sure. Okay, okay boss. Okay. Oh, sailor. Yep. You'll be ready with the speedboat, the foot of Canal Street. Aye, aye, sir. Well, that takes care of everybody but you, Rankin. Now, let's see. The liquor store where you work is around the block from the Apex department store. Yeah, that's right. Well, here's what you do. At 10 minutes of 12, you'll be fussing around with some bottles in the show window. And at 5 minutes of 12, make sure that one of the bottles slips and smashes the window. Uh -huh. That'll set off the burglar alarm and attract the cops on the beat to that particular spot. You got it? Right. That'll leave the coast clear for us. Everything clear to you, boys? Yeah, yeah sure, boys. Okay, okay, boys. All right. Now, set your watches and get going. And remember, if anybody slips up, it's going to be just too bad for that guy. There's $100,000 in the Apex payroll, and B.J. wants that dough. Do you see that armored truck ahead of us, Danny? Yes, Mike. Well, I'd like to own the money they're carrying. Maybe the truck's empty. No, no, they're carrying the Apex payroll. Oh, how do you know? Hey, because Apex pays off today. Hey, perhaps we ought to follow it, just in case. Yeah, that'd be a feather in our cap if we could capture the payroll bandits right in the act. Yes, but I wouldn't get the man higher up. A mastermind of the racket. Uh, I don't believe there's any mastermind. I do. These robberies are too well planned. Well, just the same, I'd like to be in on the job when the law catches up with them. And the truck's pulling into the Apex loading platform. Why don't you pull in here, Mike? I want to go in that cigar store and phone Charlie Storm at the Sun for some information. Okay, you go phone. I'll cruise around the block and pick you up. Uh, what time is it, Mike? It's uh, five minutes to twelve. I can probably catch him before he goes to lunch. Okay, Danny. I'll be around in five minutes. Hello, son. Give me Charlie Storm. Hello, Charlie. Now, this is Dan. Dan Garrett. Yeah. Say, uh... What do you know about a philanthropist by the name of... Never mind, Charlie. I'll call you later. Goodbye. Hey, what's the trouble? What's the matter? Hey, what happened? Well, it looks like another payroll robbery. Apex department store. I wonder where men are getting Look, officer. That car. There's some of them now. Yeah, that man clinging to running board with the black bag. He's one of the bandits. I'll take a shot at them. Oh, careful, old sticky. Don't hit the lady. Just got him, officer. Good shooting. Hey, he picked that man right off the running board. Yes. Look, he's lying in the street there. Come on, let's go. Stand back, everybody. Give me your own. Mm. Got him through the lungs. I'll get some water, somebody. Is there a doctor here? Yes, yes, I'm the doctor. You got a stimulant there? Oh, yes. Here it is. I'll give him some. It may revive him. My 
girl. She's alone now. Come on, take it easy, mister. I, I'm through. I try to go straight, but B.J., you... Who's B.J.? B.J. Benjamin. Oh. Well, he's gone, officer. This man is dead. B.J., what is the last name of the arch-criminal who rules this gang of underworld characters and whose first name is Benjamin? Can Dan Garrett pick up the trail and as the Blue Beetles sweep down upon these murderous bandits and bring them to justice? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.